emotions. For people who aren't as familiar with your story, what was the um, breaking point for you? Well, there were two. One was I was jailed in Montgomery, Alabama for my protest activity. And while there, um, I was placed curiously on the psychiatric wing of the jail only because of overpopulation. They didn't have any room anywhere else. And the reason that that's important is only because that wing of the jail was uh, both sexes, men and women were mm -hmm. in cells on the same block. And so there was a woman about three cell doors away from mine who was obviously mentally ill. She was in great distress and she kept screaming, where are my babies? This is tough to even recall. It mm -hmm. was so painful. But she said, where are my children? Who's taking care? I have three kids. Where are they? Who's mm -hmm. taking care of them? And listening to that for hours broke a kind of spell that I was under. Mm -hmm. Because during my years in the movement, I imagined always a rosy-cheeked white woman cradling a little baby that she had given birth to because she had heard our pleas not to kill her unborn child, and that there was an army of pro-lifers around her taking care of her, her child, uh, a whole community assisting them. That was not the reality for this woman. She was utterly alone. Nobody cared about her or her children. And suddenly I realized the world is not the fantasy I imagine it to be. This woman's reality is not where I've been living in this movement for 30 years. And that was the real, that helped. Well, the only way I could describe it, it was like an intervention. It broke mm -hmm. down all my imaginary defenses and helped me to see the people and their pain who were at the center of this terrible human experience. And later I would be asked by a, a friend I trusted and had worked with extensively in the uh, gun violence prevention space. She said, I had an abortion at age 22. Here were my circumstances. She said, had you been ex in exactly the same circumstances I was in facing the same risks that I faced? what would you have done? And she said, I'm not asking for your sloganeering. I'm not asking for your, you know, facile uh, stage arguments. I'm asking you as a person, what would you have done in my circumstance? And I had to think long and hard. And I brought back to memory that moment in Montgomery. And I answered her honestly. I said, I would have had the abortion. Mm -hmm. And facing myself helped me again, to understand the, the true pain and crisis that is at the center of this question. And that's why I now believe that neither the courts, nor the politicians, nor the state legislatures should be controlling this. This is a deeply personal and literally unique crisis for every woman who faces it. And she and only the people she seeks out to advise her and help her should be the ones to render this extremely difficult decision. And it's why I left the movement. And now I try to do all that I can to repair the damage I did over a 30-year period uh, based on false information and assumptions and presumptions and imagination. Uh, this is reality. It, it's not something we can create in our own minds.